This is my farm or my ranch or my, I'm not sure what you call it to be honest. <laughs> This past year I actually started my own company called Jim and Eat Crickets and I raise crickets for human consumption. Crickets are actually 60% protein by dry weight, so that's about double the protein of beef. Sending it through the sifter, it's kind of become the trendy thing to say that you're an entrepreneur. This is my hatchery. Little do they see everything that goes on behind the scenes. You definitely have to have perseverance. I do have samples if anybody's feeling brave. You have to take no a lot, or in my case, you have to endure really disgusted faces. <laughs> People who are active definitely need to get a little extra protein in their day-to-day -day basis, just from a recovery and a muscle building standpoint. So for me, that was one of the main draws to get into insect protein. Grew up playing all sorts of sports, ended up landing on basketball. Was lucky enough to earn a full scholarship to St. Joseph's University out in Philadelphia. And then was again lucky enough to continue my career in Ireland as part of a program called Sport Changes Life. I graduated with an MSc in finance from Trinity College in Dublin. So I was in the high finance industry and I actually found myself really unhappy. Moved back here to Iowa to see if I could try my hand at farming with my dad. I got back, didn't even know how to drive the tractor, so day one, learned how to drive the tractor. Day two, got put in the grain cart, um, spilled corn everywhere. Made it through harvest, survived, and then all winter, my dad encouraged me to look at other niche markets. He said, you don't have to fight the same markets I did. If you want to find a niche, go for it. We'll help you get started. So I sent them an article about raising crickets for human consumption. Crickets, people don't know it, but are actually a nutritional powerhouse, and they're also very sustainable in terms of a source of protein. They have more iron than spinach, more calcium than milk. They're a good source of vitamin B12, have a good ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 essential fatty acids, and all nine essential amino acids, so they are a complete protein. Welcome to my orchestra. That's actually what you call a, um, a group of crickets. Fun fact, I might win you a trivia contest at some stage. In this room, I probably have close to a quarter million crickets. Started off with two of these blue bins. It's been an adventure. For cooking, the initial step, obviously, is to kill them. They're killed in the freezer. Natural death, just like happens to every bug in Iowa. So after these guys have roasted for uh, just about eight hours, they get um, pulled out of the oven. These ones right here are unseasoned, unflavored, so these will be ground into a powder. And then these ones over here, they're dry roasted, they're flavored. These ones are maple chipotle. They're just a crunchy little snack. For every half ounce pack, there's about eight grams of protein. I get a lot of people that look at them and go, oh, it's got legs. My number one comeback for that is, well, do you eat chicken wings? Now we're making sure all the scary stuff is gone, so all of the legs and the big bodies it can be mixed into a protein bar or a smoothie or anything like that. Any baking recipe that you have, chocolate chip cookies or bread or anything like that, you can sub in a bit of cricket powder. So why would anyone want to eat crickets? Great question. Education is paramount in what I do. 80% of the world eats insects by choice. The population of the world is projected to be near 10 billion by 2050. Current agricultural production is gonna need to double. Where I go from here, who knows? Because if you would have told me 18 months ago that I'd be raising bugs for human consumption, absolutely not. <laughs> there is a carryover between being able to persevere 23 hours into a 25 and a half hour race and just keep moving and keep going. I actually prefer swimming extreme. Bigger muscles that way.